Hello guys, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last episode, if you don't remember, seemingly the club members all got into a fight over festival preparations, but things seem like they're going to turn out for the better tomorrow. So we're just gonna go ahead and write poems for the next day and hope that things work out in the end. Alrighty, let's start out. Kawaii. Nibble. Huh, that's weird. I only clicked two. But it says I have 111 out of 20. That means I must have enough words for Natsuki. Email. Uh, let's see, Sunny. Oh, I guess that was a Monica word. Pink. Alone. Love. Fun. Amazing. Raindrops. Cry. Nope. Uh, anime. Boop. Fluffy. Prayer? No. Lust? No. Uh, pure. Fantasy. Swimsuit. Awesome. Hi, MC! Alright, a few things that I have to mention. Uh, during the poem game, I forget if it's just during the first poem game of Act 2 or through all of them, there's a chance of Yuri's little chibi down there glitching out and being really creepy, and it's something they changed in DDLC+. Plus. Second of all, I'm very disappointed that we didn't get this on during my playthrough, but, but there's a chance that a glitched word will show up during the poem game, and clicking on it makes... The poem game loses all of its formatting, pretty much, and it gets all glitchy and weird and just strange. Anyways, I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? I brought my best tea today. Monica, I told you not to... Ugh, is she really late again? Inconsiderate as usual, Natsuki. Excuse me? Must you always interrupt my conversations with your incessant yelling? What are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis or something. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? Look, I did some, th I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I j really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. So, Natsuki... No, no, nobody cares. Why don't you go, 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 go look for some coins under the vending machines or something? Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you, must have a, you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and still trying to make time for piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. It motivates me to work hard for the festival, too. Anyway, MC, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... We already have plans today. Uh, is that so, Yuri? That's correct. MC is already engaged in the novel that we're reading together. Aren't you glad that I've gotten him in into literature, Monica? I... I suppose. I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys can do whatever you want. Yes! Um... Thank you for understanding, Monica. Huh. Pretty interesting poster in the background there. Anyways. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. If there's one thing that makes my reading time better, it's a picture of my dead friend hanging up on the wall. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug it in, in at the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. 
That's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Ah, uh, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Ten minutes pass. That weird poster on the wall disappeared. You said it wouldn't take long. Something holding her up? I'm just bored waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. An interesting detail is that, that the music sort of gets muffled when MC leaves the classroom, so it's like the music is actually coming from the, the literature club. It's a fun little detail. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. <sighs> What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. <laughs> A sharp inhale, like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Kya! I'm back! Thanks for waiting patiently. MC, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the tea- Now it's time to get the teapot! You really do this properly, don't you? Of course! I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins me measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It, uh, it turns out it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, MC. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. Watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. MC, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh... My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes! I have terrible reading posture, so that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. Go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, uh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it since it'll go with the, well with the tea. You and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but... When she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup! Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears in her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Eh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. 
but as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lif lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I, ha I apprehensively place the, the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me as if she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... MC... Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, uh. Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... MC... Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. MC! My heart... My heart won't stop pounding, MC. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, MC? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. Um, it's time to share poems. Indeed, it's time to share poems. Interesting thing is that if you're going down Yuri's route, I'm going to go ahead and show some footage on screen because I won't be able to do it justice by just explaining it. So the interesting thing about Yuri's third hangout is that it's a repeat exactly like word for word of the second hangout. Because remember, we've already gone through the... Yuri, the second Yuri hangout on this route. But there's a big difference here, and I'll go ahead and just let you read through it. It's really good. I personally prefer Natsuki's play with me scene a bit more, but that's also a really good scare for those going down Yuri's route. 
Anyways, let's start with Natsuki. This one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's, anyway. I still can't really tell how much you actually care about writing, but either way, you're doing alright. Even though you're not really spending time with anyone but Yuri. Still, I think it's nice to have activities that we all participate in. So you better keep working hard. I mean, I know I'm not vice- I know I'm not president or vice president or anything, but that doesn't mean you can let me down, okay? So at least read mine too for now. But just to be clear, this poem means a lot to me. So read it carefully, okay? I don't know how else to bring this up, but there's been something I've been worried about. Yuri has been acting kind of strange lately. You've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean. But she's not normally like this. She's always been quiet and polite and attentive, things like that. Okay, this is really embarrassing, but I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her. But if I try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. I don't know what to do. I think you're the only person that she'll listen to. I don't know why, but please try to do something. Maybe you can convince her to talk to a therapist? I've always wanted to try being better friends with Yuri, and it really hurts me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now I don't care. I just feel so helpless. So please, see if you can do something to help. I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if I have to. Just please try to do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's been really dismissive about this. It's like she just wants us to, to ignore it. So I'm mad at her right now, and that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend, just pretend like I gave you a really good poem, okay? I'm counting on you. Thanks for, thanks for reading. I changed my mind. Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's Yuri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Can you hear me, MC? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Who should I show my poem to next? Let's go with Monica. MC, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she, she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself. But when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. it might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault though. But I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So I think if you just keep your distance, that would probably be best for her. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. To put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head and I know how to treat my club members. Anyway, I worked really, really hard for this poem, so I hope that it's, uh, effective. Here goes. Jeez, that really startled me. Um... Well, I guess I kind of messed up at, uh, writing this poem. I was just trying to... Never mind. Let's just move on. Well, crud. They really try to trick you with a blue screen thing. In fact, the blue screen only happens when you're in full screen mode. It, uh, if you're not in full screen mode, then it just shows the glitchy poem in the background while she does that. Uh, which is still effective, but I really like the blue screen jump scare. Or, not really jump scare, but more of like... I guess it's sort of a scare, if you think your computer is crashing. By the way, if you go down Yuri's route, I think during Chapter 2, Monica will be like, Hey, by the way, Yuri is really dangerous, don't hang out with her. And so, if you're still on Yuri's route during Chapter 3, and you talk to Monica, she'll just say, I warned you. And then it'll just fade to black and you won't get the poem from Monica at all. Anyways, we only have one person left, so let's show our poems to Yuri. Finally! 
Yuri holds my poem to her face and takes a deep breath. I love it. I love everything about it. MC, I want to take this home. Will you let me keep it? Please? Sure, I don't care. <laughs> You're too nice to me, MC. I've never met anyone as nice as you. I could die. Not really, but I just don't know how to describe it. It's okay to be feeling this way, right? It's not bad, right? Yuri holds my poem to her chest. I'm going to take this home with me and keep it in my room. I hope that it makes you feel good when you think about me having it. I'll take good care of it. I'll even touch myself while reading it over and over. I'll give myself paper cuts so your skin oil enters my blood bloodstream. <laughs> you can have my poem too. Besides, after you read it, I know you're really going to want to keep it. Here, take it. I can't wait any longer. Hurry, read it! Do you like it? I wrote it for you. In case you couldn't tell, the poem is about ah. Uh, more importantly, I've endowed it with my scent. See, aren't I the most thoughtful person in the club? I. I think I'm. Going to vomit. A joke. A man walked into a club. In the club, there was a girl who liked him very much. They spent some time together, and then she liked him even more. One day, the girl realized that she was in love with him. Before disaster could happen, a third party intervened with her programming. Suddenly, the girl hated herself for being in love. This contradiction caused the script to derail. The universe started to collapse but she killed herself just in time. Oh, speaking of which, Sayori's in the background now. Alrighty, that's going to be it for this episode. A good chunk of creepy stuff happened, and I don't think it's going to be slowing down anytime soon, so thank you guys all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye! Goodbye!